Joining us now, a man who's from your neck of the country, Ottawa, Ontario, starred with the 67s into the NHL for over 1,000 games, Norris Trophy in 82, Canada Cup champion with the big goal in 84 in Calgary. I'll never forget that one. General manager of the San Jose Sharks, we welcome in Doug Wilson. Doug, you've got the height. You didn't have to wear those boots that I have to wear, right? No, but I was hearing this conversation. I was pretty entertained by it. I got to admit. Were, 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 did, were you were you like did I did I get dialed into the NHL network or the fashion network here? I thought it was Monty Python. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, don't get me going on some. <laughs> don't get me going if no arms, no legs, and trying to fight you without a sword, uh, Doug. I mean, uh, that's kind of the the levity of the matter. But uh, you should have seen us. Matthew and I had Steve Ludzik's roast. Larmer was on fire. Paul Coffey talked for 30 minutes straight. They had to gong show him off, Doug. We had to gong. J.P. Morgan was out there with the gong show. I don't know if you heard the stories. Well, those three guys together, I tell you what, I've had a lot of fun with all three of them. And that would be, uh, that would be entertainment for sure. When you, when you look at the start of your season, uh, getting into that, uh, obviously the game did not play out the way you wanted yesterday. Uh, what did you make of of uh, Logan Couture saying what he did? We thought it was the appropriate response in the way that the, the game played out, but uh, probably the best way you could handle a situation like that. Well, first of all, you know, Logan's just honest. And, uh, you know, he would call himself out too. And I think that's where the strength of our group is. And, you know, we didn't like our start the first four games of the year. I think our last little while, uh, I think we've got uh, seven of our last ten points, our last five games. But we haven't played the right way for long enough periods of time. And, uh, you know, I, I don't mind guys uh, challenging each other because they care about each other, and especially when they're speaking the truth. So, um, no, that's just the way our group functions. we got a great leadership group and look forward to our game tomorrow against Montreal. Yeah, we had the clip uh, after last night's game and then the one today, Timo Meyer as well, and I thought it was handled well. And You know I mean? That's when you have to decide, that the, you know, the C, and you've gone through it in your career with Chicago and the time that you were there, how important it is to say the right things. And Logan didn't go to the media first. He said in the clip, and we found out that he talked to the players as it talked to the coaching staff. So at the end of the day, I think after the 0-4 start, the worst for the club is over. Uh, one of the great storylines was the return of Patrick Marlowe. Did you toy with it in the offseason? When did you finally make the decision? Because obviously it's been a great story for you, Marlowe, and the Sharks to start the year, Doug. Well, what we did this summer, we promised a group of young players the opportunity to come in and compete for a spot. And we had some guys that uh, from Europe that signed some contracts. And, and our word is very important uh, that you honor it. Uh, we didn't bring anybody in on PTOs. And what I did tell uh, Patrick and his agent, Pat Brisson, is should we get in the position to add a veteran, uh, Patty would be at the top of the list. And, uh, you know, we went through some injuries early. We had uh, a suspension to Vander Kane. Marcus Sorensen got hurt. And Patty had been skating with our guys all summer and obviously the familiarity with them and how he takes care of himself. So it was natural. He came in. Uh, he gave us a boost. He's given us a lot of uh, versatility and any position he can play, either side, and uh, Pete trusts him. So it's been good for, for all of us, I think. Uh, Mario Ferraro is a kid that I know very well and watched him at, at UMass. Uh, he's taking steps uh, dramatically quick in, in my assessment and watching his game going back three years ago to where he is now. Um, what made you guys feel that it was right to take him, and he's been, he's, he's been a, a good find for you guys? Well, Matthew, he just plays the game the right way. He plays in straight lines. He competes all over the ice. I mean, he played with a great partner in Kale McCarr uh, in college, and I think they both complemented each other. But he's a mature kid uh, mentally, physically, and he's come in, and, and he's earned his ice time. You know, the one thing is you want to give kids opportunities, but they have to come in and take it and earn it. And he's earned uh, the respect, I think, from his teammates and our coaches and He's a fun kid to be around, too. He loves to play the game. We're with Doug Wilson, former Hawk and Shark, Norris Trophy winner, general manager of the San Jose Sharks. One of the big storylines this season has been hot starts, whether it's been the Oilers or Sabres or Avalanche have been storylines. What Dallas went through, what you guys did at 0-4 in... From your time in the game, whether it's a player or now in management, do we in the media, do the fans make too much of how good or bad it's going early? And where are you on kind of keeping the temperature even as opposed to the roller coaster ride we believe, honestly, that we and the fans are on at the same time, Doug? Well, I think to start the season, there's always you know that, that high attention span to, to things. And 
uh, I have to deal with realities. You know, we had some injuries. We had, uh, you know, Vander, I say, get suspended. And we had um, Eric Carlson uh, having the birth of a child, which was very important to him and to his family with everything he's been through. So, And then we had four defensemen get hurt. So what happens is, at every point, every team during this uh, this season is going to have a four or five game uh, bump in the road and how you handle it. But we like our group, um, how they've played at certain times, has shown what we're capable of. Uh, did we like the start? No. Um, but I think our players and our, our team has enough equity to, to know what they need to do to get out of it. And they've been doing that the last four or five games. Um, it's a long season. Yeah, you'd like to get off to a great start, but... There's certainly histories of teams as recent as last year that didn't get off to a great start that finished very well. How are those conversations? Uh, I've never been in those conversations with GMs, and certainly when your team does struggle, you know, we always say don't get too high in your highs and too low in your lows. It's a long season. We have to be able to weather storms. But how, how are those conversations between you and your head coach thus going on and him taking it to the players uh, when you are going through those streaks? Well, I've got a great relationship with Pete, and Pete's been, been through it all. You know, he's coached in many different situations and uh, uh, been very successful, especially with us. And, uh, you know, coaches live and die every day. It's it's the winner loss and the emotions get going. Um, what I try to share with him is, look, you know, we're transitioning some young players in because of the situation. I think we played, I think, 30 rookie games or 30 games played by rookies the first four or five games. I said, that's a reality. It takes a little time to adjust. Um you know, can't change the suspension, can't change the injuries, but we were seeing glimpses of things. We played Nashville, second period in Nashville was as play, well as we've played all year. Went into Chicago and played a really good game, especially in the third period there. So we saw some things where uh, uh, there was light at the end of the tunnel, but we also saw some players that I think that care so much that they try and do too much. You know, you love their heart. Um, but if you can get them just to realize they don't have to carry the team, they don't have to go and you know do too much, just do your own job. And I think that's where Pete's been really good at just clarifying that message to them. And, uh, you know, we've got some games ahead of us. Coming on the road is always a good thing. It was this trip last year that helped turn our season around too. We're with Doug Wilson, general manager of the San Jose Sharks. Doug, in our hockey lifetime, we've seen Iserman get drafted at number four in 83. I vividly remember Jimmy Davilano telling Dick Beddows and Dave Hodge, five-year plan. I thought, five years? I've never heard. Well, it, it, they eventually got there. It took longer than they wanted. They were good. There was heartbreak. They finally won in 97. It took 14 years. Looked like Ovi was never going to do it. It took 13 years. Monkey off the back. It looked like the Blues have had great teams. You've played against those teams, of course, uh, in the 80s and early 90s. They finally got over the hump. You've been there. How do you stay patient? Look so good in the white shirt. Go through all this stuff to say, if at first you don't succeed, these teams did it. We're going to try, try again, because the core that you have is still strong. How do you keep all that together to say, you know what, Cooley and Matthew, we're, we're due. It's almost our time. Well, I don't think you ever do. I think you have to earn it. And, uh, you know, you take a look at, you know, teams in the last few years and they've stuck to it. Uh, you know, what St. Louis did last year is almost unheard of to be in last place in January. And, and we all knew they had a good team, but, uh, you know, they bought into to playing the right way, the way that coaches wanted them to play, not the way the players necessarily wanted to play. And uh, uh, you get in the playoffs, you hopefully have a skill set or a group of players that are capable of, you know, beating different teams on different nights. And then you got to be healthy and then you got to play the right way and you got to play well. And, um, you know, yes, you want to keep putting yourself in that position, but I don't think anything is ever given to you in this business or, you know, now it's your time. You have to go knock that, that door down. And we've got a bunch of players that I think are in their core or in their uh, uh, key part of their careers, and um, they're looking forward to the challenge that's ahead of them. Uh, but I will say this. I don't think in all the years I've ever been in this league I've seen the elevated parity that we have, you know, teams that – Maybe a lot of people haven't talked about the last couple of years have become really good hockey teams. I mean, Colorado's a very good hockey team. We just played Buffalo, really impressed with how they played. We played Carolina the other night. So they're playing a current style that seems to be uh, you know, exciting to watch, but um, you got to tip your hats to them. But you've got to be on top of your game every night. There's nothing on the schedule when you look at a game and say that's going to be an easy one anymore. Doug, one of the caveats of your job is you know having to judge in today and up and down with rosters, like you said, deal with suspensions and deal with your everyday uh, of of 
trying to win a Stanley Cup this year, but it's also preparing for the future. You guys took a chance on, on a very talented Ryan Merkley who was traded to, to London. Um, how was his camp? How has his start of the year been since you've returned to the OHL? He's been really good, you know, and, and I think what happens, he, he's a really talented kid, but he was very young. You know, he was one of the youngest kids drafted that year. Uh, great skill set. He loves to play the game. I think it's really helped him coming out, and he uh, he lived with Brent Burns last year during training camp and got to see what Brent, how he trains and all the things that he does. He came out this year. Uh, he lived with Curtis Brown for a while. I think you know Brownie and Amy. And My uh, roommate, yes. Yeah, yeah. my roommate. Uh, and they love him. And, um, you know, I don't know about you, Matthew, but I know I was not uh, fully formed at 18 or 19 and uh, doing things I probably shouldn't have done. Uh, Doug, I'm not fully formed at 46. <laughs> you walked into that one. Uh, you know, that was Brian Kilroy, I think, tried to do his best with both of us. But um, but uh, Ryan was a young kid, you know, and he's grown up and matured. He wants to be a great player, and, uh, you know, he's been fun to be around at our camps. I think going into London is, is going to be a good opportunity for him, but... Uh, uh, we think his best hockey's ahead of him, and lots to learn. Um, but as I say, a lot of players that age go through that too. Well, Doug, like we said, uh, it's not how you start; it's where you finish. And uh, we really appreciate you coming on and uh, having a laugh with us on the program. I like to bookend things. So, Monty Python and the Holy Grail came out in 1975. It only cost like uh, 300,000 British pounds, whatever that was back then. <laughs> Maybe it'll be Doug Wilson, the San Jose Sharks, and our Holy Grail in 2020 or beyond. We appreciate your time and honesty as always, and are looking forward to your next visit. Thank you for this, my friend. Thanks, Steve. As they always say, it's only a flesh wound, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Doug. <laughs> Got to get him on the square table, Matthew. I know, he brought I know. it. Hey, he, there's a message for the other general managers out there. <laughs> Bring it. Like, and what a player, eh, Doug? Like he, that's in my wheelhouse. I've got him in the hockey cart, him in the shot, him in the 39 goals, and some other great stories that Ludzie and Lormer told me that, of course, we were all young men once, my friend. Yeah, Matthew. good Ottawa boy. We, we shared the same agent, Larry Kelly. I'm sure next time we'll get into that uh, tremendous GM. He's been there a long time and uh, he's seen everything and sometimes, you know, uh, you need patience, you need to preach patience. He's got a very good hockey team. He's been close, uh, but certainly he works every day trying to make this team a Stanley Cup champion, but a lot of fun. Great interview. Yeah, and uh, he's so calm in the white shirt when some things have gone on around him, and I thought, the hockey gods want the Sharks to win last year <laughs> with everything that they went through. Uh, it wasn't to be, but it was a great long play. I, I mean, I'd we... have some burgers sweating through those white oh, shirts. He... I'd be keeping the jacket on at all times, I can tell you that. Yeah, I'd like to get into him. Like, he was just on, and I, 15 other things. Yep. Vlasic's got one goal. He's yep. Minus 10. Joe's off to a rough start. Where's he on analytics as a, you know, a, a veteran of the game? Like, all that stuff. You know what I mean? We just, we try to do the best we can in Bruce, the 15 book minutes. Bruce, book him for tomorrow. <laughs> Bruce, book him for tomorrow. Hey, if they win five in a row, book him back again. He'll come on every other week. Absolutely. We'll talk about Monty Python oh, for you, those who remember. Do you, do you think they're superstitious? Is that what you're saying? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Tell absolutely. them the Christian Dvorak story.